You may be seated. Because if you don't sit down now, you'll be standing the whole sermon. <laughs> this week, we once again recalled as a nation the horrific day of 9-11. Today, I want to share just a moment about that. I was a rabbi in New Jersey. Many of my congregants commuted to Manhattan for their work. And there was an individual who, of course, was in the towers when they were struck. And I received the call that every rabbi doesn't want to receive. A woman in our congregation with two small girls could not get through to her husband because, of course, he had perished in those towers. And so I sat glued to my TV this week and watched as names were recalled and listened for his name. And it was reminiscent of uh, an exercise that my congregation had undertaken the year before, and that was that we were going to, for 24 hours, we were going to rename, we were going to name, we were going to read the names of individuals who had died in the Holocaust. And so for 24 hours, we read page after page, stack after stack of names. And a woman came into my office at 3 o'clock in the morning, she said to me, she was crying, and I said, what are you so upset about? And she said to me, the names were difficult to read because they were really a different language. And I wasn't sure if I was reading their names right. And I said, I'm sure you did a great job. She said, but what if they were listening for their name and I mispronounced it and then they felt they had been forgotten? to understand. Imagine in the creative rabbinic mind that a Kodesh Baruch Hu, that the Almighty is sitting next to them saying that was your name. Don't worry, you haven't been forgotten. This week we recalled thousands of people who died on 9-11 because we understand the power of memory not just to ensure that it doesn't happen again, but because it happened already. We as a Jewish people value memory. Zecher asher asale amalek. Ella read. Remember. Zechor et asher asale amalek. Remember what Amalek did. We say every week, Zechor et yom ha-shabbat likod show. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We will, in a few weeks, gather here in this sanctuary with hundreds of people in order to be able to recite the Yizkor prayers, the pay prayers of memory. Memory is important. It's vital to a truly living. It's what it means to be someone who has been in connection, in relationship with somebody else, and they are no longer with us. It's an incredibly powerful motivator for actions in our lives. But I tell you, this morning you get a choice about what you remember and what you don't. With time, you decide what memories in your life are going to remain vivid and which memories in your life are going to fade away. As a nation, this week we said the memory of what happened on 9-11 will never be forgotten. There have been extraordinary moments in our history that we've completely let go of by the wayside, that we don't recall, we haven't devoted a day to. There are some memories in our national history that we actually have transformed into something else. Our Memorial Day here in this country has become more about barbecues and parties than about remembering those individuals who we lost in service of our nation. We get to make choices. 
And so I say to you today, remember kindly. I had the honor this week of officiating at a funeral of a dear family friend. And he said to his daughters on his deathbed, he said, do me a favor, remember me with a smile. What a great gift in your final hours to say, just remember me with a smile. He didn't say, make sure you say Kaddish. He didn't say, make sure that every year on my birthday, that you put flowers on my grave. He just said, remember me with a smile. So you have a choice about what you're going to do and what you're going to remember. And you each know that in your own personal lives that there are stories you tell over and over again and there are stories you never share. I don't want you to start right now. But you know you've made a conscious decision about what those stories are that you're going to share, how you're going to change them a little bit, and which stories will never be uttered from your lips. This week's parsha offers us one extremely challenging moment that I have struggled with as I unpack this text. It says, amongst the very many laws that are offered, in one location, it says, he shamer benegat sarat lishmor maod v'lasot kechol asher yeru etchem. Be careful when you come into contact with leprosy. Every law that we have in this week's parsha says, do this, don't do that. You should try this, you shouldn't do that. This one goes on. Zichor et asher asad onai l'miriam. Remember what God did to Miriam when she got leprosy. There isn't a single moment in this morning's parsha that gives us an example of what happens if you don't do what's right. Doesn't have any moment other than this in this morning's reading in which it says, remember what happened to so-and-so. And we can think of many opportunities. There were moments in the Torah that taught us extraordinary lessons because of the catastrophes that befell individuals who transgressed. Why not recall for us the moment of the rebellion of Korach? Why not recall for us the moment when an individual was trying to subvert God's will and Pinchas rose up and killed him? Why not recall for us the moment in which an individual who was caught collecting sticks on Shabbat was put to death? These are extraordinary moments as well. Why bring up Miriam? She was a tzedeket. She was righteous. She was a neviah. She was a prophetess. She was an extraordinary individual who the Jewish people loved deeply. So much so that when they went out on the journey and Miriam wasn't with them, they stopped in their tracks. The text tells us the Jewish people loved Miriam. And they wouldn't move on without her. That the universe altered its course when Miriam wasn't around. It says in the text that the water stopped coming because Miriam wasn't there. Can you imagine the power of this individual, the love and the admiration, the adoration and the honor afforded this extraordinary person? So why bring up her one indiscretion? You get a choice about what you're going to remember. You get to decide, am I going to talk about what a person did wrong, or am I going to remember them for good? Am I going to keep them alive in the positive, or will I only talk about their negative? You get a choice. Each and every one of us, in every opportunity, has a choice to make. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I say, I wish I had stopped one sentence earlier. I think you're laughing not because you've heard me make those mistakes, but because you've done it in your life. How many times have you said to yourself, I wish I just stopped earlier? How many arguments have you had with somebody and you throw in the kitchen sink and you've lost focus on what you were actually discussing? 
You have a choice to make in your life what you're going to say and what you're not going to say. If you're going to remember positively or you're going to remember negatively. Rashi says, he loved Miriam so much and look, something happened to her. Remember, if Miriam was so great, she was so awesome and so powerful, and yet she got punished. What's going to happen to the rest of us? You need the example of Miriam in order to teach us a lesson. I have to tell you, if you've ever suffered illness, it's enough of a lesson in and of itself. You don't need somebody else to show you what they went through. This morning's parsha says you have a choice to make in everything that you do. You have a choice to make in what you say and what you don't say. You have a choice to make in the stories you share and the stories you choose not to share. You have a choice to make in what you're going to remember and what you're going to forget. I remind you that in this season of the year, when we're all trying our best to make ourselves just a little bit better, to engage in the act of tshuva, of return to a better state of being after a year of mistakes, I caution you to remember those mistakes you made, but forget the ones that others did to you. Forgive and forget. You have a choice. Shabbat shalom. We continue with Musaf, page 184. Please rise. It kadavit kadash mei raba vi almadi berakirute vi amlik machute bechayichor yamechol uvchayir kovet Israel.